الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أي رحبة في الله It's imperative that we understand some of the rulings pertaining to Zakat al-Fitr because we've now reached the last 10 nights of Ramadan and Zakat al-Fitr is something mashru, something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam practiced and the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in in the salaf of this ummah and it is something we have to know, we have to have an idea about the ahkam. So we'll try to be as brief as possible and we will go over a very simple compilation that I put together from one of the mashayikh uh, and hopefully it will be beneficial to give us some idea about some of the basic rulings of Zakat al-Fitr. Zakat al-Fitr it can be defined as specified uh, or a specific charity from a specific expenditure imposed upon every Muslim before the Eid prayer. So Habatifillah, this means in this definition, Zakat al Fitr can be defined as a specific charity. So it's a specific charity, it's different than your regular Sadaqah, and it's different than Zakat, than the general Zakat which you pay on the different uh, asnaf or the different types of wealth. For example, the wealth of your, your uh, whether it's gold and, and uh, whether it's zakat al mal or it's zakat behemat al an'am, meaning on uh, animals uh, like the uh, cows and goats and camels. So this is a different type of zakat. Zakat al fitr we pay at the end of Ramadan and we're going to talk about its ruling and some of the important matters pertaining to it. And as we said, it's a specific expenditure. This is also imperative that we understand this because a specific expenditure means that it's a specific type of wealth that we use to pay the zakat, meaning food. Because this is from the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. not that we give ten dollars or whatever the local imam has designated is a certain specified amount although the uh, imam abu hanifa rahmatullahi this was in accordance with his goal or at least his madhab is that they believe that you can pay uh, zakat by wealth but this is in contradiction to the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi and the all the other uh, the ulama from the different madhahib were him that they hold that zakat, zakat al-fitr, should be paid in food. And we're going to talk about some of those specific details. The ruling of zakat al-fitr is that it's an obligation, and this is by ittifaq. This is by agreement with the four madahib. The, the madhab of Imam uh, Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, and Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal, rahimahumullah, jami'i, as well as the, the zahiriya, uh, Imam uh, Dawood al Zahiri. And the evidence for this is the hadith of uh, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu or Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made zakat al fitr an obligation, a sa'ah from dates or wheat upon every free person, slave, male or female, young or old person from the Muslims which should be paid before going to the Eid prayer. So this is the statement of Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu which he said the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made zakat al-fitr so that for the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he made zakat al-fitr an obligation and it was an obligation on all the Muslims to pay before the Salat al-Eid. When? Before Salat al-Eid and this is in accordance to the statement. So this is the statement of the Salaf, the statement of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. And these statements, Allah, they don't come out when we have a hadith like this where the Sahaba or a Sahabi will say, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, that uh, Farada Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
this is a hadith, it, it is marfu. He's mentioning that, that this was the action of the Prophet Sallallahu The Prophet Sallallahu made this an obligation. So this is a hadith which uh, shows us the obligation to pay zakat al-fitr. The wisdom, what is some of the wisdom behind zakat al-fitr? Some of the hikmah or the wisdom is, for one, it purifies uh, a person's fasting from their shortcomings. Another wisdom behind the zakat al-fitr, and this is also the shortcomings of your fasting, the shortcomings, for example, the sins that you may occur. Maybe you started singing songs. Maybe you cursed someone. Maybe you became angry. Whatever shortcomings in your fast, Zakat al-Fitr is there to help uh, compensate some of that ajr and fulfill the void and the gap of the reward and that great deed of ibadah. Another wisdom or hikmah behind uh, Zakat al-Fitr is that it helps feed the poor and it discourages them from having to beg on the day of Eid. And that way they can enjoy happiness on the day of Eid as well. Uh, a last wisdom that the scholars mention with regards to Zakat al-Fitr, and it also comes from a hadith as we're about to mention, is the one who fasts receives immense reward from Allah for providing for those who are deserving of assistance. So Zakat al-Fitr, it's a way of purifying your wealth and uh, spreading the benefits to the rest of the community. Those people who have a hajjah, they have a need because they are less fortunate and they don't have uh, wealth or what is sufficient for them, so they are deserving of that zakat. So this helps to fulfill their need. So you're receiving an excellent reward. It's a chance for you to get this great reward. This is part of the hikmah. And another part of the hikmah or wisdom is that it fulfills the need of others. So it's a type of ibadah that uh, has a great effect upon yourself, the one doing the action of ibadah, and the community. Uh, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made zakat al-fitr as a purification for the fasting person from useless and vain speech and as food for the poor. Whoever pays it before prayer, then it is accepted zakat. And whoever pays it after prayer, then it is considered a form of charity. Uh, Abu Dawood with Ibn Majah. this hadith is very important. The hadith of Ibn uh, Abbas anhuma, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made zakat al fitr a purification for, fast, for the fasting person from useless and vain speech. So first and foremost, we gain from this hadith is that the, this hadith uh, the legislated hikmah, the hikmah of this ibadah, we actually have from a sahaba, from a sahabi, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, that it isn't just something that the later ulama looked at the nusus and they came up with some of the wisdom and so forth, but this wisdom is actually um, uh, openly stated by the sahabi Jalil ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa made zakat al-fitr as a purification for the fasting person from useless and vain speech and as food for the poor. So those are two the wisdoms we already mentioned. Whoever pays it before prayer, then is it accepted as zakat. Whoever pays it after prayer, then is considered a form of charity. This is imperative for us to look at Ahabat because this shows us where the ruling, and we're going to get into this later, but it shows us that uh, the time for zakat, zakat al-fitr, zakat al-fitr, it should be pray, paid before the Eid prayer. Before the Eid prayer, you have to pay zakat al-fitr. So zakat al-fitr is not uh, after Eid, sometime during the day, the next day, but in fact, you have to pay zakat al-fitr uh, uh, before the Eid prayer. And this is... Uh, in accordance to this hadith of the Messenger of Allah or the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in or radiallahu ta'ala anhum who must pay zakat al-fitr? Zakat al-fitr is an obligation upon every Muslim that meets the following conditions. So here's some conditions that the ulama have stipulated which comes from uh, the textual evidences. Number one, the person 
uh, should possess enough food for provisions for his or herself for a day and an evening, the day and night of Eid. So if a person has less than that, they don't have what's sufficient for themselves to eat and sustain themselves for a day, for the day and night of Eid, then this ibadah, yaskut had ibadah, that this obligation, uh, uh, you know, it doesn't meet the criterion of them having to get zakat. So, someone who's extremely poor, they're homeless, but they're fasting Muslim, they don't have what's sufficient for them for the day and the night. Maybe he has what's sufficient just for the evening, for breaking his fast, that's it. So for him or her, they don't have to pay zakat. Because they don't have the qudra. And this is very important, habitifillah. Qudra, having the ability to do an act of ibadah, is a condition for all of your ibadah. So this is why, and this is a little off topic, but just as an example, when we hear the shabab, they get excited about uh, issues of jihad, they want to go fight with ISIS, they want to do this, they want to do this. One of the conditions for that act of ibadah, meaning uh, jihad fi sabidillah, is that you have the ability to do so. Okay? All of your acts, zakat, hajj, the Prophet Sallallahu said in, about uh, Islam, he said when, uh, in the Hadith of Jibreel, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam said, Ya Muhammad, akhbirani al-Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Al-Islam, in tashiru in la ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad rasulullah, wa tukimu salah, wa tukimu zakat, wa tukimu ramadan, wa tukimu al-bayt in istatata ilayhi sabiyyah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned the five pillars of Islam, defining what Islam is, or the pillars of Islam. Then the last pillar he said, uh, and Hajj al bayt and making the Hajj, making the pilgrimage, if you are able to do so, letting us know that Qudra, uh, Qudra is in uh, a stipulation for that act of ibadah, that you have the ability to do so. If you don't have the ability to make Hajj, you don't have the wealth, you don't have the means, if you're a woman, you don't have a mahram, whatever the case may be, <coughs> then it, it is then in that situation, it's not an obligation upon you. It's not an obligation at that time for you to fulfill that because you don't have the qudra, the qudra. You don't have the means. You don't have the means to fulfill that ibadah. So likewise, with paying zakat al fitr, you need to have the means. Ahabatifillah, the second condition, uh, or it's related to the first condition, this is regarding the person who's responsible for others. A man who has uh, a family. If he doesn't have enough provisions for him, himself and his family for the day and the evening, then again, this obligation is not upon him. He doesn't have to pay zakat al fitr because he doesn't have the qudra again. Uh, the scholars have consensus that the one who does not possess anything for provisions does not have to pay zakat al fitr. Here's a very important issue. And we'll stop there so that we don't prolong things and make it too long. One of the, this important issue, a man is responsible for his family and children with regards to zakat al-fitr. For example, if a man is divorced from his wife and he has children with her, he is still responsible for those children even if they don't live with him. Because he, he doesn't, he's not relieved from his responsibility for his children ever. His children, they are still his children. He must pay zakat al-fitr for his children. So this is very important that we have, an, have, have this understanding, even if the woman remarries, because the, the children belong to that man. They are the sons and daughters of, uh, the, uh, of the, the ex-husband, and it's his responsibility. So it's very important. But here is another important issue that comes up. The issue, what about the wife? Now, Ahabatifillah, in going into this issue, I found that the ulama have some differences with regards to a husband paying zakat al fitr for his wife. Let's take a look at this. So, regarding a man being responsible for his wife's zakat al fitr, the scholars have two opinions regarding this. Number one, the man is obligated to pay for his wife, and this is the view of most of the Malikiya, the Shafi'iya, and the Hanabila, the, the Hanbali scholars, the Shafi'i scholars, and the Maliki scholars. Most of them 
and they hold this view that a man sh must pay for his wife. And they argue that this is because marriage is a reason uh, a man becomes responsible for paying expenditures. Because if a, hus if a man and a woman are communicating for marriage, he's not responsible for her. He doesn't have to pay zakat for her. As soon as they do akhtinika, as soon as they marry and enter the marital bond, the man becomes responsible for her nafaka. He's resp responsible for her, her clothing, her home, her food, etc. Okay? So, this is the, <coughs> the um, evidence that those uh, ulama say with regards to this first view. And this is the view that I have, that the man is responsible for his paying the zakat of fitr of his wife, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. The second view, so that way we have uh, knowledge and, and we understand that other madhahib and other ulama, uh, even some early classical scholars, that they also held this view that a man is not responsible for paying zakat al fitr for his wife, and that she should pay herself. This is the madhab of the Hanafis, the Zahiriya, and Ibn Mundur as well, as well as, from our time, one of our scholars, Bin Uthaymeen, Rahimahumullah, Jami'an. They hold this view that the woman is responsible for paying her own zakat al-fitr. And as far as the evidence, they just use the general evidence <coughs> with regards to each person being responsible for paying their zakat al-fitr. So from this, they deduce that uh, that every individual, the woman should pay herself. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Uh, it, it appears the first view is more, uh, is, is stronger, and the majority of the ulama have this view as well, that uh, the man should pay for his wife, as he pays the nafaka for her as well. Ahabat Tifillah, we will stop there and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ilm al-nafi riskin tayyib wa amil al-mutaqabbil and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting and accept our zakat al-fitr and bless us to be of those who are able to pay it and to help and assist our brothers and sisters who are struggling uh, with their means wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam